Hello, this is David Bergantino. I'm the writer and narrative designer of Return, One Way Trip. And I'm gonna walk you through the demo right now, talk about the story and the characters and how things developed. I hope you enjoy it. Right off the bat, you'll see that this game is heavily inspired by anime and Japanese horror films like The Ring and The Grudge. But for something to be scary, it's more than just throwing a cat at people. You have to care about the characters. So you'll find that on top of this being a scary game, that it's actually quite an emotional story as well, particularly for our protagonist, Saki. You'll see that in a bit. I hope you enjoy it. Meanwhile, let's enter the unknown. Yeah, this quote should really put you in the mood. Okay, here we go. Five friends camping in the woods. What could go wrong? Let's meet our cast. First up, we have Yuda, the quirky loner of the group, which seems like a contradiction. Sake, she's our heroine, more on her later. Kazuki is the bro. And then Sen, the popular guy. And Kane, the sporty girlfriend. So you can already see that this is a crossroads moment for this group of friends. It's their last hurrah after school, but before they start real life. So already there's some emotional tension here among them. And that train whistle you hear is, is pretty key. Sound is very important in this game, and that is probably the most important sound as that's what heralds the approaching doom. Now, if the characters seem like cliches at the moment, that's okay because that's somewhat intentional. They're written so that you get a quick grasp of who the characters are, but that also gives you a place to start so that they have somewhere to go and hopefully they go somewhere satisfying for you uh, as the story develops. Okay, we're finally getting into some gameplay here with uh, Saki and Kane having to look for wood. Now, this is what happens if you try to follow the guys. Don't want to do that. Well, this is what happens if you try to forge ahead without any light. As you can see, there's little uh, spy glasses where there are interactive points. This is us checking out what everything is. Oh. I wonder about that fire myself. Now here's our first instance of collecting an item, actually two items. And this also gives us a look at how the inventory system works. Okay. We can look at the book. If you'll notice the book opens up so certain documents will be collected here. We'll show that later. And we can turn the flashlight off and on. Yay! Let's look for that uh, firewood, shall we? There's some wood. Nope, too wet. 
Check out that owl, by the way. Super cool. The foreground work, the art on this is fantastic. Yep, there we got some, some suitable firewood. What's over here? Nice lake. Ooh, beautiful and spooky. All right, let's head back. Hello, owl. Aha. Look what we found on the ground, an envelope. So this is uh, something that you'll see throughout. It's, part of it is because of the uh, sort of Japanese influence of this game. But part of it is I just plain love haiku. When I was a kid, I would write even horror haiku. Yes, that's true. So 90% of the documents you find here um, are haiku. And I sat and I wrote every one of them. Um, and they tell their own story. And that's Kane for you, being the loyal friend. So now that we're back at the campsite, this is how we use items in the game, go into the inventory and select them and put them where they need to go. So we've lit the fire back up. We're hiding the haiku back in Sen's backpack. And now, here come the boys. So there's Kazuki being a bro. Well, this seems innocent enough. Time to go to bed, but hey! Wait! Yeah, Saki's a romantic. But maybe someone else is a romantic. Uh-oh. And here we go. This is our first character reveal with Sen, who's supposed to be the confident, you know, popular guy, suddenly becomes paranoid and jealous. And this is an important theme that, that, that travels forward, but he's the first one to, to break, to have a, a, story, a character development. And this is what causes the breakup of the group. Jealous people can be mean. See? Even Saki thinks so. That's the thing about loners, is they, they're sensitive. The quirky ones are, are sensitive. And that's Yuda. So, Saki is sort of passive and kind of goes with the flow, but at least at this point, when she needs to she can at least calm her boyfriend down and sort of keep the peace. But it's not like she ran off after Yuda. She took the easy way out and just told everybody to calm down and left it at that. Uh, 
nothing good can come of this girl. Yes, yes she was. So there's the train whistle again. Uh, that means something terrible is about to happen. And even more importantly is there's an earthquake, a rumbling. Uh, like I said earlier, sound is super important in this game. And it also gives you a lot for very little. So rather than doing ex uh, expensive animation and uh, graphics, we can just use a sound to create a mood to make you feel something. And in the case of the earthquake, We've actually used the sound as a character that develops over the course of the game. You'll see. Or you'll hear to be more accurate. Okay, here we are back in the game. Saki woke up to find everyone gone. That can't be good. All right, can't go that way. Well. Maybe we can find something sharp this way. Ruh-roh. What? Now that wasn't there before. So there's a lot of walking back and forth in this game, but that's also part of the format. It's a 2D scrolling game. But what's key is that not every place you go will be the same the next time you go there. So there's always something to discover. Like here. There wasn't anything here before, but now there is. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word. But there it is. It's a knife. Still sharp. I think we needed something sharp to get through those vines, so let's head that away. And there we are. We're through the vines. Yikes. Who's that? Okay, first rule of horror. Don't go after the shady character. Oh, well. So you can see Saki is still sort of tentative, a little bit scared, although that's fair enough. And here we are, the train. Well, that explains the whistle. So, at this point, even Saki's kind of aware of uh, horror tropes. But hey, she's a good friend, so she's going after her friends.
Hmm. Who could that be? Hmm. Yikes. Hell, I just jumped. So, you know, sometimes jump scares are good too. See, she's, she's one of those girls who's like, oh yeah, my boyfriend always tells me this. Ho, 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 he's so right. Oh, that'll change. So you don't have to do this, but of course, if somebody's scared of being somewhere, they want to leave. But at least we have a reason why she stays in the scary train. What's that? Hmm, we'll have to remember that. Okay, good to know. I love this. Yes, it's too gross to touch, but... Okay, a locker key. Where did we see a locker? But why do we need a locker? Okay. Now we need a tool to continue. And we have a locker key. And there's a locker. That's a cool puzzle. You'll see that later. Well, in the full game, I mean. And there we go. Here's the first of several children's drawings on the back of which are all haiku. And each of the haiku has some sort of double meaning related to the story itself. And here I'm showing you how documents end up in the notebook in your inventory. And you can check them out in the haiku in their entirety. Go to the next car. Go to the bathroom. It's always a good time to, you know, do a bathroom stop. You have a toilet without a handle. And no, I would not stick my hand in that muck either. That phone there is the save point. And here's our first room we can explore. Something there. So this is a diary page, so it's not a haiku. That also is an indication that this is a specific character that's different from the one that's creating the children's drawings. You can tell this is a bit more adult-oriented. But there's more. Ooh. Okay, not that room. Huh. A room that's chained up and locked. It's 
That can't bode well. Ah, our first real puzzle. There's a combination lock on a door with red paint. Paint. I saw something having to do with paint earlier. Well, we'll get back to it. Now the bathroom stop. Aha! Yes, of course. Because we know there's another toilet missing a handle. But before we go there, let's see what's this away. Here's the dining car and another children's drawing with a haiku. This is a particularly creepy one, I think. I bet it was. So, of course, this is just to keep us from uh, getting too lost in the game. We've already got a few things we need to do. we got a toilet handle. Uh, we've got some paint thinner trapped behind a curtain that we can't get to. So, we know we have stuff to do rather than just explore willy-nilly, as it were. Yep. Mm, nice sound. Aha! I bet they could too. All right, don't look at that. That's, oh. That's the creepy handbook. Don't look at the creepy handbook. It's Yuda. Where did he come from? So I don't I don't want to step on this scene too much, but this is say your first sign of what I was talking about earlier in terms of it being an emotional story. Cuz really they're talking about their emotions right now. Yuda's acting weird and he has a very very strange take on the progression from friendship to marriage coming up. We also get to see from somebody else's perspective, uh, you know, Saki's character about how she's a bit weak-willed and goes with the flow and just, you know, is a good girl. And maybe that's not where her character needs to be. Here it is. Hmm. If I didn't already know what's going on, I'd be worried too. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. And there it is. It's the paint thinner. I have a feeling that's going to come in handy as well. Don't, don't look at it. Oh, she looked at it. 
Hmm, waiting for something. What could that be? All right, splash of red paint. I have a feeling you're gonna be unsplashed. Ta-da. Hmm. Hanging figures, bad. Whoa. Nothing scarier than a child laughing in the dark. What the? Huh, that is strange. Boy, you, speaking of which, you is acting kind of odd, isn't he? I guess Sen really did a number on him. Oh, wait. More kids' drawings, yay! Hmm. Uh-oh, there's the rumbling. We know what that means. That's not creepy at all. If you're feeling disoriented right now, so Saki. Nope, not that way. We already know what those are. Uh oh. Yeesh. I think Saki's in trouble now. I gotta say, I love this creature. Run, Saki, run! So there you're seeing uh, a tease of things that appear in the, later in the game, which is Saki travels back and forth between now and the past so the the new stuff is in the past it's a train whistle there's all sorts of other characters to encounter puzzles to solve um there's a mystery there's a dark terrible mystery at the center of this that you have to uncover and you know she has to find her friends so there it is, the demo for Return, One Way Trip. I want to thank our publisher, Green Man Gaming, for bringing this game to you. And especially the team at Red Ego Games for making a fantastic, gorgeous, scary game. And finally, I want to thank you for checking out the demo. I hope you pick up the full game when it's available this September. Have a good one. Bye.